term. Let's dig a little deeper into the economic picture now. Let's bring in Guy Laba, economist and chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. He joins us from Philadelphia. Guy, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, as always. Uh, your take on these numbers today. What was your first reaction? Sure. Well, the first reaction to the S&P Case-Shiller home price data was that we now have two solid consecutive months of increasing home prices. And really, that's enough for us to say that the housing market has, in fact, bottomed in terms of prices as well. Just two? Just concerns. two? You, you, you wouldn't go a little farther and say maybe, maybe three or four consecutive? Two is enough for you? At this point, yes, it is, especially with the degree of strength we've seen in June. And also, of course, in existing home sales data we had just last week, we're also seeing an uptick in the number of sales, not just the home price, which is also another positive sign. Uh, not, the, the rebound, though, it, it wasn't that dramatic, was it? Well, this month's data actually indicated a 1.4% increase in home prices, data for June, actually. And that's the highest single month we've had since, I believe, 2005. And that was the peak times. So, you know, we're apt to see a little bit of what we describe uh, in economic terms as a dead cat bounce in the coming months. But there's really, in the long run, we see a lot of economic pressures that are likely to prevent home prices from spiking a lot higher at present. One of those pressures, Guy, perhaps, this is Lori, by the way, consumer confidence showed a surprisingly strong bump, but still overall pretty weak, though. Are consumers starting to loosen their purse strings now, and could that offset some of the other weaknesses we're still seeing? Well, right now we're seeing a little bit of consumer optimism, but really spending habits haven't changed all that much. If you look at the monthly data, it suggests that consumers are also or continue to save at a very high rate and pay down their credit card balances. And saving is the opposite of spending in many cases. So we're not seeing a big bump from consumer spending in the immediate future. That's more of a several months down the road phenomenon, we believe. Okay, so you're a fixed income strategist. Do you think recovery, uh, the Treasury yield, rather, which is very classic, positive, showing we're, we're in this early stages of economic recovery, do you think that's an accurate characterization of where we are in the current economic cycle? Well, right now we're seeing the front end of the Treasury curve that is maturities that are, say, two years and shorter, very much constrained by Fed policy. And unless the Federal Reserve sees genuine sources of higher inflation, I don't think we're going to see the Fed remove their extraordinarily accommodative low-rate policy in the near future. So realistically, Treasury rates are pretty unlikely to spike. Uh, we might see a slow creep higher as we head in towards year-end, and optimism improves. Guy, uh, the, the home price number, if, if we can return to that for a moment, do, what were the region by region numbers telling you? What, specifically, we'll talk about regions like Detroit and Las Vegas, mm -hmm. which have been getting hammered. So it was very remarkable that out of all the 20 cities surveyed in the monthly data, only two showed monthly decreases in home prices. And as you referenced, those two were Las Vegas and Detroit. But those two cities have very specific sort of idiosyncratic economic issues. In Detroit, we have auto industry problems. In Vegas, we have a very weak gaming industry right now. And so aside from that, once you step away from the two acute problems, the picture was looking even a lot better than it might otherwise have. Even places like Charlotte, that was very heavy on the banking industry, was showing signs of positive home price appreciation. So, so the weakness that you saw wasn't that surprising then? No, realistically not. And again, it has to do with the fact that these two cities are concentrated in, a ver in very weak portions of the U.S. economy. All right, Guy Laurie, again, back to the Fed. Of course, Bernanke gets renominated today. Your thoughts on that? Is it a surprise, really? But what is perhaps more telling is the timing of the president's renomination. Did that suggest anything to you? Well, it suggested that we're going to ensure that there's going to be continuity in the recovery process. You know, Bernanke has been sort of a force throughout this whole ec period of economic intervention, and he's probably the best person to continuously support Fed policies as we move away from government intervention. And I think sending this early signal proves to the markets from the administration's perspective that they're committed to a smooth, continuous process here. What are his next challenges going to be now that his renomination is something that he can just relax about now? Well, I think Bernanke is going to face a little bit of a challenge ensuring that the Fed maintains its independent status. You might recall from a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago, there was some concern that Congress would start stepping on the Fed's toes. And that could have some really negative long-term implications for the ability of the Fed to support the economy. So I think his battles are really going to be political ones in large part. And, and Guy, uh, we have about 20 seconds. Speaking of political battles, was this something that the president had to do to renominate Mr. Bernanke, just as you said, to keep that continuity going? Well, I think it was the easiest choice, certainly, but it was also the smartest choice, because really that continuity is absolutely key. Nobody knows Fed policies like Bernanke does because he created so many of them. So he's got to be the perfect person to be able to remove them. 
Guy LeBay, economist and chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott, joining us from Philadelphia. Guy, thanks. And he Thank was uh, quite gracious to play a little ping pong with us going from topic to topic Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Thank you very Lots much, to Guy.